Welcome fellow cruisers. In this episode, I will show you a different way of maintaining internet access while in a cruise ship that does not involve buying a cruise Wi-Fi package. Make sure you help me out by subscribing to this channel so you can see more travel content. All right, so what I tried out on my last cruise was to purchase an eSIM through a company called GigSky. So what's an eSIM? It's basically an electronic version of the SIM card that you probably already have in your cell phone. What the eSIM does is allow you to have the ability to have a second phone line for accounting purposes. So for example, I currently use T-Mobile as my carrier and I added the eSIM from GigSky. Now I can choose which of the two companies I want to use to access the cell phone towers. This is great when you travel to another country and don't want to pay the roaming fees or buy the international plan. So you're basically using GigSky as your cell phone provider. Other eSIM companies which are popular for travelers are Aerolo, which probably has the best coverage around the world, Olafly, which has unlimited data offerings, and then Nomad, which has plans based on days instead of a data limit. Now the reason why I chose to try GigSky is because of their relatively new cruise data plan. This plan allows you to connect to the internet whether you're on land or at sea. The plan covers your land usage when you are ashore, and then it covers your usage when you are in international waters, so you don't need to purchase a separate Wi-Fi plan on the cruise ship. As of the creation of this video, the GigSky plans will cost you about 18 US dollars for a day for up to 512 megs of data. And then they have a plan for about $26 for seven days up to one gig of data. And then lastly, they have a plan for about $51 for 15 days with three gigabytes of data. So basically for less than $4 a day for the seven or 15 day plan. As a comparison on a princess ship, if I get the Wi-Fi package for one device, that would cost me about $250 for the trip, which is about $25 a day. And as you can see here, because I do cruise quite a bit, I get a discount for being a platinum member on Princess and I get it for half, but that's still 12 something a day. On a Princess cruise, you can also get the Premier package at $80 a day, which allows up to four devices per guest plus a bunch of other things like beverages, tips that are already included, photo packages, and desserts. Or you can get the plus package for $60 a day, which gives you one device per guest. Similarly, the other uh, perks like uh, up to 15 drinks a day, uh, tips included, photo packages, and so forth. As a comparison, Royal Caribbean will cost you about $17 a day if you're not doing any streaming and then $23 a day if you're going to be streaming video. NCL will cost you about $30 a day for non-streaming and then uh, $40 a day with streaming. So how about the speed? How fast is GigSky? I first did a test on land. At my hotel in the UK, I used the hotel Wi-Fi to connect to speedtest.net and got about 13.6 megabits per second which is fairly typical speed for a hotel Wi-Fi. Then I used my regular cell provider, which is T-Mobile, and did the same test on their 3G network, and I was getting about 40.2 megabits a second. And then lastly, I used the GigSky connection and got about 76.5 megabits per second. So that's almost double the speed of my regular provider. So that's pretty fast. Right, then I got on the ship and tested the connection using GigSky. I was getting about 2.3 megabits per second using fast.com and then 3.6 megabits per second using speedtest.net. So not super fast, but good enough to do emails and read the news. In my experience, that's about the similar speeds that one would experience if they use the onboard Wi-Fi connection. I have heard that Starlink capable ships are supposed to be faster, but I have not experienced that for myself, so I can't really give you the speed comparison. So what do you need in order to use GigSky? Requirement number one, your phone needs to be eSIM compatible. So for Apple phones, it's gonna be the iPhone XR, XS, 11, and above. And sadly, I found out that my older iPhone X is not eSIM compatible. For Androids, because there's so many variations, you wanna check out the list in the description below for your phone. 
Requirement number two. You need to have your phone be unlocked. Otherwise, you won't be able to use another SIM card. And you can call your cell phone provider and ask them for the status of your phone, or you can do it yourself. Right? For iPhone users, you can go into settings, then general, then about, and then scroll about halfway down to the section that says carry a lock. And if it says no SIM restrictions, then you are good to go. For Android users, open up your phone settings app, and then look for connections or network uh, and internet option, and then something that looks like mobile networks, and then network operators, and then your phone will look for accessible networks. And if there are many networks shown, then your phone is unlocked, and you are able to use other carriers and eSIMs. And what I did not realize is that unlocked means I have to have my phone be paid off. So if you're on a payment plan to pay off your phone, you will need to make the payment in full before your provider can unlock your phone. Otherwise, the cell phone provider can't unlock your phone because you may go to another provider, and apparently that is not a good thing in the cell phone biz. Requirement number three: If you plan to use the Gig Sky on land, then make sure that the countries you are traveling to are on their coverage list. So go ahead and check their website for that. They do have very broad coverage, so unless you are going to some really obscure country, more than likely they will have it covered. And requirement number four: If you're planning to use the cruise plan, then your ship needs to support cellular at sea, which most common cruise companies now all support. And you can check on the Gig Sky page to see if the ship you are on is on the list. All right. So if all these conditions are satisfied, then you can download the Gig Sky app from wherever you download your apps. And then you launch the app, and you'll be asked which plan you want to purchase. You can choose from a country, a cruise, in-flight, or offshore. In this case, I will be doing a 10-day cruise, so I'm going to go ahead and click on cruise. Then select a cruise company. Here you're given options on which plan you want. I'm going to buy the 15-day, three-gig plan as I will be on a 10-day cruise. So next, I will be asked to create an account. So go ahead and fill in your information here, and then you will get an email to verify your information. So within your email, go ahead and click on the link so that they can verify your account is valid, and then you can get back to the app and continue. Next, you will go ahead and pay for the plan you selected. In my example, I had chosen a seventy-three ninety-nine plan, and I have a fifty-dollar credit that is applied. And then, if you have a promo code, you can add that here. On an iPhone, the payment it's really easy as Apple Pay is already all set up, and I can just get that rolling and then done. Now I enter the name of the phone that the eSIM is going to go to. I guess this is for folks who have numerous phones that they're buying eSIMs for. You can kind of keep them,、uh, keep track of those. Once it's done, you can see the confirmation on that plan. All right, it tells you what the plan is,、um, the starting dates, and the name of the phone that it's going to, and the ICC ID. And here is a pop-up that tells you that the plan will start 30 days after purchase, or when the SIM connects to any supported network, whichever is earlier. So basically, that means you can buy your plan as close to 30 days before you start your trip. So you can go ahead and plan accordingly. And notice here that reminds us that an eSIM is not installed, and you can click here to install that eSIM. So once we've clicked on the install eSIM, it's going to try to download that eSIM and connect to that network. This would have been easy and painless, except I screwed up and bought the wrong plan. I bought the Caribbean plan instead of the Europe plan, so I had to contact the Gig Sky support folks to fix my problem. And this was actually a good mistake to have made, as I was able to test out the support service, which was actually excellent. They were able to refund my purchase, give me a credit. And then I was able to buy the right plan using the credit, and that was all done within about an hour or so while I was overseas、um, driving and getting lost. So not not bad at all. And during that time that I messed up, the prices actually dropped, so I was actually <laughs> able to even save more money. 
All right, once you have the eSIM activated, you can choose which line you want to use as the default line to call or send messages. You can select which line you want to use with iMessage and FaceTime. I did all the setup in airplane mode over Wi-Fi. So once I was ready to use GigSky, I switched the cellular back on and turned off Wi-Fi. From settings, I can now choose which SIM I want to use for what purpose. You have both a cell service and data service. So you may choose to keep your cell service on your primary SIM card and use the eSIM for the data plan. This method will allow you to keep your primary number for phone calls, but then you'll be charged for roaming. Or you can use your primary SIM card for data if your provider gives you a data plan in foreign countries and then use your eSIM for cell calls. Uh, this way you can make calls with your eSIM like it was a local call. But basically your phone is now ready to go. So under settings and then cellular, I can choose which one of the two SIMs I want to use. For me, because my T-Mobile plan allows me 5 gigs of data when I'm in a foreign country, I will use my primary line when I'm on land. So I will switch the GigSky one off. Then when I'm on the ship and I can't reach the cell towers that are on land, I will turn off my primary eSIM and then turn on my GigSky eSIM so then I can use that to connect to the internet. The big difference between GigSky and the ship's packages is that the Princess Wi-Fi plans are not limited to the amount of data you use. So you don't have to watch and track your usage. I found that since this was my first time using GigSky, I wasn't really sure how much data I was using, so I kept checking on how much data I had left pretty frequently. But the good thing is that the app makes this process super easy. So was 3 gigabytes for a 10-day cruise enough? Just as the guide, 3 gigabytes of data is generally about 210 minutes of TikTok. And so if you're on TikTok a lot, that is probably not enough. 3 gigabytes of data is also about sending and receiving about 3,000 emails. But that was definitely plenty for me because I use my internet connection to basically send and receive emails and for the most part do light web surfing that doesn't involve a lot of videos or pictures to be transmitted. But I can see that if you want to catch up on social media or stream videos, then you would definitely need more data and you can do that by topping up and that is easily done through, via the app as well. So to summarize, GigSky definitely is a win for me. So for GigSky, the base cost is about $4 a day uh, versus the uh, Princess package, which retails for $25 a day. Speed on GigSky is about two to three megabits a second, and that's comparable to the cruise Wi-Fi that I have experienced before. On the data front, GigSky, you're limited to whatever plan you bought versus Princess has an unlimited amount when you buy the package. And I have to pay attention that I can't transfer large files. And it's easy enough to fix by buying more data, right? But uh, just a consideration to have. So one other thing to note is because GigSky is essentially using the cellular at sea service while you're on the ship, Keep in mind that the service will only be available when the ship is more than 12 nautical miles offshore. So if you're within an hour or so of leaving a port or landing at a port, you will probably not get any service. And lastly, if you're gonna be buying a GigSky plan, type in Blue Monkey as the discount code to get 10% off. I am not an affiliate of GigSky, so I don't get paid for these referrals. I have a decent amount of stock holdings in the cruise companies, so my best interest is for the cruise companies to make money, but I want my viewers to have a choice in what's best for them, so that's why I got a discount code from GigSky. For a video on the must-have tech gadgets for a cruise, watch this video here. For more travel videos, make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Safe travels and make it memorable.